This brings us to the last chapter in this crash course. What you're going to do after this is wait a while. And if you see this video later in the future, it will already be ready. And that will be for the WordPress Essential. Essentially, we're going to create another one pager, but you're going to do a lot of different things. You're going to work with global styling, understand how you work with the color palette and a, a lot more additional features. And I think the only way that you can really learn WordPress is to do it again and again and again. But if this page that we've made suits your needs 100% and you're only going to make it once, you're done. And of course, you're going to just swap out the images and the text and you can play around a little bit in the Brizzy Builder to have a look at all the other elements, but you're done. Though, however, you're not done. So let's have a look at this. Let's go back into WordPress and that is done by clicking on the W and it takes you into the WordPress dashboard. And this is how you navigate between the front end and the back end. But what I want you to do is take your domain name, the URL for your site, which is only this part that I've selected up here. Now that is a very long name and it's only for this tutorial that I've created it. And I want you to copy that because that's your home address. That's where people will go when they go to your site. And then open a new tab and paste it. And why on earth do you want to do that? Because this is your home page. And look what happens when you type that in. It doesn't give you this wonderful coffee shop page we've just created. And here is the thing. You've created this page, but you need to tell WordPress that this page that I've created this is the page that I want people to see when they type in my website address. And a lot of people get a little bit confused about this because in many builders and online content management systems like Wix and Squarespace, this is automatically done for you. In WordPress, that is one step you have to take. Just note that what you see here is actually the blog, the posts. Archive. This is a collection of where all the posts will appear. And the reason why WordPress likes to show this as your homepage is because of the history of homepage uh, of WordPress. WordPress started as a blogging site, not so much as a site for websites. It was purely focused on blogging. So its primary focus had always been the blogging. How can we change that to make sure that when people type in my address, they get my coffee site. Go back into WordPress and then you do that by going to settings and you look for reading. And this is a part that when you start in WordPress that often scares a little bit. Don't try and understand it too much. Just follow it. Here it says your homepage displays and you want to select the second one, a static page. So for your homepage and then you select this one, my first try. So you see there are two pages that it has identified. I want to select my first try as my home page. Now don't worry, that name, my first try, will not appear in your title. That is just the name for this page and for WordPress to identify it. You can also go and change it if you want to. But let's leave it like that so you understand what we are working with. And then the golden rule is to save, save changes. Now you have told WordPress that you want my first try page to be your home page. Let's go to the front end with this tab still open and then refresh. Voila, there you go. There is your page. So finally, now when you take this URL, your domain, and you share it with your family and friends, very proudly the website you've made, they will be able to see it. But we still want to change another few things. Look at the tab here on the top of the browser and you will see it says just another WordPress site. And then, of course, it has the website address there. You don't want that. You don't want that title there. You also don't want this little icon there. This you need to go and change. So we go again back into WordPress and you do that by going to settings and then select general. Just note that these settings I'm showing you now can often be done also in the theme. So Bloxy can also do this for you. But let me show you where in WordPress you can find it. The site title is the name of your shop in most cases, which is the organic 
cafe. Alt one two three zero. There we go. And then the tagline has to be a very short, precise description of your services, your product, or what the site is about. Best coffee shop in Paris with the finest. This tagline and the site title is very important for search engines like Bing and Chrome and the others. They go through all the websites while you are sleeping and they check them and they find all these keywords so that when people search for this, they know how to recommend it. It's just one step in what we refer to as SEO, but it's important that you at least give your site this identity so you don't look like a novice who doesn't know what they are doing. And then after you have done that, you can go to the bottom and click on Save Changes. Now it will update that. So you will see here where it used to say just another WordPress site. It already says the organic cafe. But let's go to the front end and we again refresh our page and you will see it says now the organic cafe. And if you hover over it, it will say best coffee shop in Paris with the finest international. So don't make it too long, right? Remember that little tagline is more for the search engines than it is for other people and then my website address under it. Now we want to change out that icon, which is referred to often as the site icon, but traditionally it's called a favicon. And that word favicon comes from favorite icon. And actually Microsoft in Internet Explorer was the first to come up with this so that when you saved something as a favorite bookmark, it saved that little icon next to it so that you can easily identify it. Now, strangely enough, that is done in the theme. And when you do use a standard WordPress theme, that may often appear here, but we don't see it here. So where am I going to upload the favicon? I gave you the clue, it's within the theme. So we have to go into Bloxy and remember, change the Bloxy theme, customize. Hover over appearance, under themes, select customize. And then here we are going to go to the bottom, under core site identity, very similar to what we did. And when I select it, you will see the site title and the tagline, they both appear here. So you could have done it here as well. Now we go ahead and select site icon. Bloxy says we prefer site icon to favicon. And there is the favicon I've included for you within the creative pack. Select it. And then select publish. And you can close out the customizer. We go to the front end, refresh. And there's our little favicon at the top. Brilliant. And you can see it also updates over there. I gave it a little bit of a white background. You've created this page, you've set up WordPress, you installed Bloxy, your theme, you installed Brizzy, your page builder, you built out this page, you created a contact form, you made anchor links, you brought in all these images and you set up your text. Are you done? Like I said, if this is all you need, you're done. If you are you know, interested in going beyond this, there's a lot more to come. If you want to learn how to take full control over the theme and Brizzy, there's lots more to come. And if you want to learn how to make a multi-page website, more than one page, how to create a blogging site where you have news and events if you are a traveler, or how to set up your own shop online with a free tool like WooCommerce, or how to sell or set up a online training course. You maybe do yoga or you have something and you want to actually have a course on your website, yeah? Or how to create a multilingual website. You know, not just one language, you can have two, three more. Or even how to make a knowledge base site. Wow, all of these options are there and more. And this is where WordPress becomes extremely powerful over all of the other products out there. A lot of them, Squarespace, Brizzy Cloud, Wix, do a great job job, an amazing job, and they're all in one package. But a lot of this stuff I just mentioned to you gives you flexibility to add all these additional plugins and apps and do more. Enough talk. We've come to the end of this crash course. I hope it was useful. I hope it got you going quickly. There's loads more to do. And that's why 
I'm happy to bring you the next one in this series, which will be WordPress Essentials. Again, we'll go through our favorite apps, but this time we'll focus on a few other things. From me, JP, take care and I'll see you around.